a blessed morning and a blessed Sabbath to you all. I'd like to welcome you all as we're going to sit and discuss present truth. Blessed Sabbath. And our topic today is going to be how God speaks to us. We know we have been since creation, God has been with us until he comes. But he speaks to us every day. So first we're going to find out how he was speaking to the people in the Old Testament. Because most people when they read, read Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, they will tell you that God the Sunday times was speaking to the people in the, in the Old Testament. But this time we are just having the Bible. He speaks to us through the Son of God, the, the Bible and what. But we want to compare what he was doing and what he now is doing to us. So that we know how he relates to us in the New Testament and he was relating in the Old Testament. So that's why the topic is how God speaks to us. Now, for us to understand more, we, we, we want to start from the call of Abraham. How, he, how did he come to this person called Abraham, who is now our father, who he says, we are Abraham's seed. If we be Christians, we are also the children of Abraham. But our forefather Abraham, how then God was speaking to him, and then we go past to see how we are speaking to Jacob, Isaac, and all the people that we might think of. And then we find out how he is speaking to us today. Now, um, we read from Genesis, we go to this, he said, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. If you can read for me in that verse. Genesis chapter. Chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> 12 verse 1, yeah? Genesis 12 verse 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, mm -hmm. the Lord had said unto Abraham, right. Get thee out of thy country, right. and from thy kindred, mm -hmm. and from thy father's house, right. unto a land that I will show thee. So, right from there, there is a communication between God and a human being. So, we say that in that chapter only, God spoke face to face. He spoke to Abraham, telling him exactly what he is supposed to do. How he's going to go to the land of Canaan. He was communicating to Abraham. So we are seeing that he communicated to Abraham face to face there. And let's go even to chapter 15 and see exactly how he was communicating with Abraham there. Mm -hmm. 15 verse 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. And when the sun was going down, right. a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Like we all do. After sunset, we prepare to go to bed. And this is what happened to Abraham. He went to bed after sunset. When the sun was setting, then he went to his bed. This is what the Bible is saying to us, right? Let's hear. Mm -hmm. And when the sun mm -hmm. was going down, right. a deep sleep fell upon Abram, mm -hmm. and lo, mm -hmm. a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Right. And he said unto Abram, mm -hmm. Know of a surety right. that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. So what was Abram being given there in a deep sleep? He was being given the prophecy of what his own descendants were going to experience. They were going to go into the, the, the land of Egypt and stay there until he was being given a forecast of what was future to him. But how was that communication? Our topic is how God speaks to us. The communication was over a dream. So that's why I marvel at a, a, a man called Lot. He believed the dream. So it means when Abraham went to Lot to tell him that I had a dream, this is what God said to me. There was no book. There was no spirit of prophecy. There was no Bible. There was nothing to support as evidence to Lot to say, 
Now this is the, a correct report coming from Abraham when he was sleeping. He had a dream. And he went to tell Lot. This is what God has said to me. And I'm going. Lot could have said, do you know the land? Because there at that time, they were in the air of the Chaldeans. And Lot could have asked, have you been there? And Abraham said, no, I haven't been there. Obviously, there was a communication between Abraham and Lot. They had to sit down to talk about that dream. They really did that. It was not just like, you know, what we think is auto like that. No, Lot had a brain like yours and mine. And Lot listened to his uncle. And Lot heard the uncle say, I was dreaming. And this is what I dreamt. You understand? How many of us, do, do you see how, how much unbelief we have this time? That God could have continued in that communication with his people. But in our time, you saw that we have so much drifted from the belief that was in Lot. And said that nobody can come and say, ah, I dreamt of this, let's go, let's go. Nobody can do that in our time. Because we, the reason why is because God has given us even books. Why? Why did he give us books? SOP. Someone said, I want evidence from SOP. I want evidence from, from the Bible. I want evidence from... But let me tell you one thing. There was no spirit of prophecy. There was no SOP. Lot believed. That's why his name is there in the archive in heaven. He believed an uncle who was sleeping, who came and said, God has said to me, let's go to a land that we have never been. And he actually packed his bag and went with his uncle. How much belief was in Lot? So compare with our own belief. Would anyone come and say, I dreamt? Right? At least the person who God speaks to this time has been given more equipment as evidence to an unbelieving nation and unbelieving people of this time, so that when that person says what God has said to that person, the people will ask, we want evidence. Then that's why we have been given to the law and to the testimony. Why, why would we need the law and the testimony? When Lot did not need the law and the testimony, think properly, it's unbelief. We are deeply in unbelief that God now knows in our time we need the Bible to, to, to back our ideas. We need the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Without those two, we will never believe. We will only believe when we see it to the law and to the testimony. We cannot take it from the mouth like that as it was with Abraham. But see here, it was a dream. Yeah, repeat that dream. Let's enjoy it. Yeah. Genesis yeah. chapter 15, verse 12. Verse yeah. 12. Mm -hmm. And when the sun was going down, right. a deep sleep fell upon Abram, mm -hmm. and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Right. And he said unto Abram, mm -hmm. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in mm -hmm. a land that mm -hmm. is not theirs, right. and shall serve them, and shall afflict them four hundred years. I marvel at a person being told about the dream. And acting after a dream. And I marvel how much faith was in that person. To believe an uncle who has been dreaming. I don't know how much faith that was. Let's go and see again in, in Genesis chapter 13 verse 17. Let's hear another exposition. Listen to that. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Arise, mm -hmm. walk through the land in the length of it mm -hmm. and in the breadth of it. Right. For I will give it unto thee. Right. You see? God is still communicating with Abraham. Arise. Go to Canaan. Walk to the breadth of it, to the length of it, to the height of it. This is the land I'm going to give you. You see, you see he's not talking to Lot. He's just talking to one person there. And the person, that's why he just came up with Lot. What do you think happened to the rest of the family there? Did they believe Abraham? Did they? Because obviously when he's being given a land full of milk and honey, that's what it was with God's mouth. He could have even wanted to 
come with this father or come with this mother or come with this brethren or come with his friends and neighbors they did not believe him they the only person who believed was Lot. so in that time why did everyone not believe because god was just talking to one person this is how god speaks to us he does not speak to us in a big mountain in a big pulpit and say now I'm telling you, everyone, this is what I want. I want you to prepare for the kingdom. He does not do that. He speaks to one person. And that person will tell everybody. And those who want, like exactly what he did to Lot. When he went to Lot, he told him, Sodom is going to be destroyed. But what did Lot do? Tell also his sons-in-law. That let's get out. This, this country... This Sodom is going to be destroyed very soon. Let's get out. Did they believe him? They didn't. So you see, when he believed his uncle, just after a dream, but even his sons and his children and his own wife did not believe him, not after a dream, but after the three men came to him, the three men who were angels, they came to him and they told, they told Lord, that this place is going to be destroyed. Let's get out. And the, the Bible clearly said that even Lot was doubting at that time. Lot had drifted in his own belief that he had for the uncle. But until they had to say, out, 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 they had to actually make sure they bring them out in haste. Everyone wasn't believing. Do you see this unbelief was there? When people are telling you that there is no kingdom which is going to be established on the earth, don't, you know, understand where they are coming from. They are, they are sunk in unbelief just like it was with Lot. Lot was now drifting downwards, backsliding in the belief that he had when the uncle just talked about a dream. But he has seen a person and he actually had to pull, he had to be pulled out of Sodom. Because of this belief. And the wife wasn't even taken out. He di she died of unbelief. Now, let's go to the, the which other verse did I give you? 13 verse 17. No, ju just go to verse uh, 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 Genesis 17, verse 1 to 6. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 to 6. Let's see uh, how does God <coughs> speak to us? How does God, because sometimes, uh, is this lesson very important to us? Yes, it is. Because we are, we are looking at how God deals with us. We are yes. still humans like Abraham, like Lot. And peradventure will miss how he talks to us. Right, let's go. Uh -huh. 17 verse 1. Right. And when Abraham was 90 years old at nine, mm -hmm. the Lord appeared to Abraham and right. said unto him, mm -hmm. I am the almighty God. Right. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, do you see what God, what God has laid in that verse? When Abraham was how old? 90 years old and nine. Anyone who is 90 years old will say, uh, it was time up. There was no need for a child. They were old. 90 years old. And nine. And nine. 99 is almost one year before 100. That God spoke to and someone who is about to be 100 years. Promising that person, think of the 100 years people that we have right now. God coming to them to promise them that they should have a child. Do you understand how much belief was in Abraham? But though the, the wife laughed. You know, genuinely speaking, you can think Sarah loved for a cause, for a true cause, because she's been told when she's old that, you know, it means for some time she has been looking forward to being pregnant and she failed. And that was so disastrous to her marriage. But they kept on hanging until the hope was lost. Then God came. Do you understand? That's why Sarah loved. When I was so strong, I didn't have a baby. And now I'm being told I'm going to have a baby when I'm so useless. I'm old. 
Now, this is what, read on this here. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant mm -hmm. between me and thee, mm -hmm. and I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. All right. And Abraham mm -hmm. fell on his face, right. and God talked with him, saying, mm -hmm. As for me, mm -hmm. behold, mm -hmm. my covenant is with thee, right. and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. Is, it, is Abraham in a sleep there? He says, It appeared. It appeared. An angel appeared to him. So it's a face to face conversation. This is how God spoke to Abraham that day. It was face to face. Yeah. And he's been instructed that you're going to have a child. And the wife was there and laughing. Now, read on, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, mm -hmm. but thy name shall mm -hmm. be called Abraham. Right. For a father of many nations have I made thee, mm -hmm. and I'll make thee exceedingly fruitful, right. and I'll make nations of thee, mm -hmm. and kings shall come out of thee. Right. This is all being promised to Abraham face to face. He's talking to him face to face. I say, how did God speak to the people in the Bible? How does God speak to us now? Now, um, he did not say, Abraham, call your whole house up. I want, to, I want witness. No. He speaks without witness. And the only person who remains knowing that God has spoke, spoken to me is Abraham himself. No Lord was there. No father, no brother. No what? But God speaks to that person face to face individually, independent of other people. So the other people are left to believe that God has spoken truly to that person. Right, let's hear um, chapter 18, next chapter. Next chapter, chapter 18, this one, it's, it's a bit long, it's up to 22. We, we can reach there when we want. Right? Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord appeared unto him. Did you hear? He, God is, is it, it, there is no way. Look at how many pupils we have today. There is no way. God has several pupils. pupils. No way. In that very age of Ad Abraham, the pulpit was with one man. The pulpit. God was stationed at Abraham's pulpit. See, listen to the Java, 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 Java games which are there today. Definitely God is not speaking to several pulpits in one time. God speaks to one pulpit. God was with Abraham in that age. And he kept on following this man. Right from the beginning, the era of the child years. With him promising him where he has to go. And God continues to speak to that person in his own place. And he continued now to be talking to him in Canaan. He did not say, oh, maybe there was another person left in the area of the child. And let me go also to that one and say, no, no, no. In one period, he was talking to one man. How God speaks to us. Does he speak to us in several pulpits? One saying there's, no, there's a kingdom. The other saying there's no kingdom. One saying let's, let's, let's kneel. The other saying let's not kneel. The other one saying that the peace should be kept. The other person saying, no, this is... You see what is happening around us? Previously, God had one prophet. Has he changed in our day? Let, let's, let's hear. We want to study how he spoke in different ages, in different generations. How did God speak to people? Lest we'll be, you know, shown several pulpits. Some are so much built in magnificent buildings that we all, and some people wearing expensive robes when they are talking. And you get carried away and think, I think God is also talking there and there and there. He never did that. In each period, he was speaking to one person. This is how God was speaking. Now, let's hear in Genesis chapter 28. Oh, have you finished that one? Chapter 18. Let's hear. He's following this man. He's not, and the Lord. The Bible sorry. didn't record another man being spoken to at that time. Not, not at all. Not at all. Don't be deceived. He speaks to one pulpit at a time. Right, listen. Yeah. And the Lord mm -hmm. appeared unto him right? in the plains of Mamre. Right. And he sat in the tent. Why God is following this man? 
He is the prophet of the time. He is the father of prophets, the father of many nations, father of kings, father of kings and priests, nations. Many were blessed because of this father. Now let's hear, let's hear that. He's been followed. Mm -hmm. He was in the plains of Mamre, mm -hmm. and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Right. And he lifted up his eyes and mm -hmm. looked, mm -hmm. and lo, mm -hmm. three men stood by him. Right. And when See, he the saw three them, three men were not lost. They are sent straight away to the man who is in charge in that very generation. Do you understand? Three men now came to Abraham. Now, let's hear. And stood by him. Right. And when he saw them, mm -hmm. he ran to meet them from the tent door mm -hmm. and bowed himself toward the ground. Right. And said, mm -hmm. My Lord, mm -hmm. if now I have found favor in thy sight, right. pass not away. So Abraham wasn't lost. He knew exactly that these three men is the Lord himself. And he bows himself, and they came, they cannot be lost. They are coming to the prophet of the hour, who God is talking to in that generation. Right? Let's hear. Mm -hmm. And he said, My Lord, mm. if now I have found favor in thy sight, mm -hmm. pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet, mm -hmm. and rest yourselves under the tree. Right. And I'll fetch a morsel of bread, right. and comfort ye your hearts. Mm -hmm. After that, ye shall pass on. Right. For therefore, are ye come to your servant. Mm -hmm. And they said, mm -hmm. so do as thou hast said. Right. Did you see that? <laughs> and Abraham right. hastened into the tent to Sarah, mm -hmm. and said, mm -hmm. make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. Right. And Abraham ran unto the head and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto the young man. Mm -hmm. And he also dressed it. Right. And he took butter, mm -hmm. milk, and half of the calf which he had dressed mm -hmm. and set it before them. And mm -hmm. he stood by them under the tree as they did it. You see, they are in the home of Abraham. <clears throat> God was not lost. God knew exactly where to go when he wants to visit. When he has a message, he had a message. And then says in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, when I have a message, I tell the secret to the prophet. So Lot was very fortunate to be very close to that prophet who was his uncle. So all the secrets were with this man in that period. Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Verse 9. And they said unto him, mm -hmm. Where is Sarah thy wife? Where is Sarah thy wife? You know, <laughs> they are in the family. They are requesting for Sarah. Right? Let's hear. <laughs> and he said, right. Behold, in the tent. In the tent. It's and he said, there, In the house. Yeah. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee yeah. according to the time of life. Right? And lo, mm. Sarah, thy wife, mm -hmm. shall have a son. Do you see? This is a face to face conversation. How did he speak to the people? Was he speaking to several prophets at that time, promising the son of promise? Now, now we are at the age, at the nearest point to meeting this family, this family in heaven. How is he also speaking to us? Now we are going to find out how he speaks, how he spoke before and how he's speaking now. Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. And Sarah mm -hmm. had it mm -hmm. in the tent door, right, which was behind him. So Sarah was, was inside the tent, but the, 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 the Visitors are communicating to Abraham, the husband, right? This year. Now, mm -hmm. Abraham right. and Sarah mm -hmm. were old right, and well stricken in age. Imagine these people who are so frail. God is still coming to them and promising them a miracle. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Right. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Right. So it means he had, she had reached menopause. You know, imagine the time she had not reached menopause. Nothing happened. No child came to this womb. And when she has ceased menopause, and the Bible clearly states that she has ceased menopause. That's when God came to Sarah. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Sarah loved within herself. Sarah saying, loved. This was a laughter of the day. Though it's God talking to, to Abraham. But what Sarah is listening to. She loved within herself. It's just a mirror. It's a joke. 
Oh, these days you can say, say, laugh out loud. L O L. That was Sarah. Do you understand? Yeah. And nobody would, would penalize Sarah for laughing because there was a genuine laughter there. There was a genuine laughter. She is rich, menopause. And she's being told she's going to have a child when she has stopped going to men's is nothing. That's why she laughed, isn't it? Now listen to that. Yeah. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, Right. After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Imagine, imagine that. Listen to that. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Right. Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Why, why is he laughing? Why is she laughing? Why is Sarah laughing? That's God. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Saying, Shall mm -hmm. I of a surety bear a child which I am old? It was really, really weird. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Then God said, Is anything hard? For God. Right? Mm -hmm. At the time appointed, right? I will return. Unto when them. I return next year, according to the time, time of life, and right? Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah will be having a son. Did you hear that promise? Face to face communication with heaven. Did you hear? When God is talking about the saints in the Bible, Abraham, you should know exactly the biograph of this man. Who could talk to God face to face like that? Being promised the thing that he needed most in his life was to see a son coming from himself. Right, let's hear that. Mm -hmm. Then Sarah denied. Saying, Sarah, Sarah lied. But I loved not. And I didn't love, but God had seen that. For she was afraid. She was now afraid. Oh, I don't know. I didn't love. But she had loved. Right? Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. Nay. But thou didst laugh. You did. You did. There, there are people who don't laugh aloud. <laughs> they laugh in the heart. They are laughing inside. And God is seeing what you are doing in, inside your body, in your heart, that you are laughing. You are really laughing. And no, I'm not laughing. I'm not. And God said, you did. You did. You see how God reads all the minds. He reads them. He does not look at you face to face. He looks at your heart. Are you actually laughing? Are you actually believing? Are you, is this fake for you? Is, this is the God we worship. Who knows what each heart is full of in a, in a, in a chosen moment. Now let's hear, let's hear more. Mm -hmm. And the man mm -hmm. rose up from thence right. and looked towards Sodom. Right. And Abraham went with them mm -hmm. to bring them on the way. Right. And the Lord said. Listen to the, he is now divulging another secret. The first secret was, that you're supposed to have a child next year. When I come this time, you will have a child. Don't laugh. This is genuine. Right? That's the first secret for their own household. What they needed in their household. They are told exactly what they will have. Right? The next secret, listen to what he's now talking about. That's why we say, Amos chapter 3 says, God communicates the secret to the prophet. Listen to the prophet. He's been given a secret. Listen to that. And the Lord said. And Lord said. Shall I hide from Abraham right? that thing which I do? N now, because they were on a mission. But now they are they are leaving Abraham. They are now continuing with their mission. But they say, but shall we hide this mission? Now that Abraham is so loyal to us. Listen to the qualification of the secret. Read, read again that statement. And the Lord said, Right. Shall I hide from Abraham? Right. That thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Because this person shall be a great and mighty nation. And mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth this shall be blessed in him. This person is valuable to us. Shall I hide? Is one of us. Is our gang. Yeah, yeah, it's our gang. You know, when gangsters are formed, they have one thing in common. Now, God is saying, we have one thing in common with this man. He's so pious. He's our gangster in heaven. Did you understand? Now, shall we hide what we are going to do so that our gangster also hears from the newspaper? No. Before the gangster knew, hears from the newspaper, let the gangster hear from us. You understand? He is communicating the secret. To the prophet. Did you hear that? Now let's hear. Mm -hmm. For I know him. Right? That he will command his children. Because the other qualification this gangster has, he now he knows how to 
command his children. And he's a household and after him. And he's a household which has been given to him by God. He knows. That's why they are giving him the son. Now already they are thinking this son is going to bring, you know, a big, massive patriarchs and prophets. Did you understand? The patriarchs are the children of Jacob. They are all coming from Abraham. Because God has said, you have got to be a father of many nations. A father of the, of the believing ones. This one is part of us. Shall we hide? That is going to command all his household to follow us. This one is ours. It's part of us. You understand? Now listen to that. Yeah. For I know him. I know him. That he will command his children. What you for before Abraham had any single child, that his determination is to make sure whoever comes near him will worship God. Mm -hmm. Look at what he has done. He has brought even a nephew, Lot. When he can do that to the nephew, how about his own kindred coming from his own body? God knew. His determination. God knew how determined this prophet was. And he's going to command his whole household. Household to be nations and nations were going, to be, were going to be commanded by the influence of this man. So we can't hide. We can't hide our mission. We can't listen to that. Right? Mm -hmm. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. Right. To do justice. This is judgment. the person who is going to make the whole world keep the way of the Lord. This one. Now, listen to that. Yeah. And the Lord said, Right. Because of the cry mm -hmm. of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Right. And because their sin is very grievous. Sodom and Gomorrah has a great cry. And their sin has gone great. You know, when he talks about the Revelation 18, as your sins have reached heaven. Talking to, to the house of God, Laodicean, your sins have reached heaven. This is what he means. This is purely what he means. What was in Sodom has reached heaven in Laodicea. That's why he calls it now. Come out of here, my people. Because the, the cries and the sins have reached heaven. If the sins which were in Sodom are also found in the house of God, they have reached heaven. Did you understand? This is why God had to stand up. To make sure, right, I'm going to do a smart job. Ezekiel chapter 9 is coming for you. But it's first, before he does that, he tells his own people, come out of it. Come out. That's what he did in Moses' time. When people were rebelling against God through Moses, the very first command Moses told the people was, all those who are for God, come out. Because God is about to do something. And it was, when they came out, the earth opened, they all swallowed. This is what he's actually doing now. He's commanding, he says, the sins in Revelation 18, the sins of her have reached heaven, which was the sins which was in Sodom are now in the house of God. They have reached heaven. Come out of here, my people. He's pleading with his people to come out. If you don't, you will read it in Chronicles very well. He once did it. Chronicles, very he, he did it. He took his own out. And he did that when the, 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 tem the temple in Jerusalem was being destroyed. He said, whoever is above there, don't go down. All those who were following him before the destruction of the temple were out. And the temple was destroyed. And that's how he does his things. He says, now I'm, I'm about to do a, a very smart job. Your sins have been heard in heaven. Come out. Come out. Those who want to fight for their life, come out. Because the sins have reached heaven. This is what he does. When he calls people Babylon, he now knows they are exactly doing what was being done in, in Babylon. Or what was being done in Sodom. Now here, he's saying, we will communicate this secret to the prophet. Because I know this prophet will make sure after destruction of Sodom, will continue with the faith that he has and instructing the children to follow our order. Now, listen to that. Listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will go down now right. and see whether they've done all together according to the cry of it, mm -hmm. which is come unto me. And right. if not, I will know. Right. That's good. Talking to, 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 to Abraham. I'm now going to Sodom to see what 
they have done, whether it's according to what I want. If not, right, listen, he, he's talking to Abraham, this secret, right? This and is. the men uh -huh. turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. Right. But Abraham mm -hmm. stood yet before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abraham drew near and said, mm -hmm. Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Right. So Abraham has been told that I'm going to do a smart job there in Sodom. A smart job. And Abraham is worried. Are you going to destroy everyone? Why is he worried? The nephew is in Sodom. Lot is in Sodom. Remember, he rushed with a wife who wanted the world more than God. There, that's where he went to Sodom, to settle in Sodom, because it was more greener than the plains, than the mountains and plains where he left the hills and valleys for Abraham. But now, because he loved the pleasure, he has thrown the husband to go to, to Sodom because there's greener pastures there. Yeah, so many people who rush for greener pastures when they find they, there are so many judgments for God there in greener pastures. And then you are also incorporated. But if you are upright in those greener pastures, God will whisper to you to come out. We need to destroy this place. You understand? Now, here... They're talking, they're talking to, Lord, to, to Abraham. Let's hear, let's hear more. Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Look at this prophet. He's pleading now, knows that his nephew is in fire. Right? Listen to that. Yeah. Per adventure, there be 50 righteous men within so the city. So now he's pleading for his nephew. If per adventure, there are only, you know, 50. Would you destroy Sodom if there are 50? Right? Mm -hmm. Will thou also destroy Listen to the answer. their Listen place to for the them? answer. Right? That be far from thee. Yeah? To do after this manner, right. to slay the righteous with the wicked, right. and that the righteous should be as the wicked, mm -hmm. that be far from thee. Right. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Right. And the Lord said, Listen to the, to the answer. If I find, if I Sodom, find in, Sodom, in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, 50 righteous, then I will spare all the place for their the, sake. Only 50. Imagine 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50. If I find that number, I will spare I'll all the spare. place. You see how places are spared? If there is 50 people who are upright in front of God, that place is spared. Yeah? Then we find many places are, are, are being, you know, ruined and destroyed. Yet there are people who claim that they, they are the house of God. They know God so much. They keep all the Ten Commandments. But why is that place being, being destroyed when you are there? When the people are at least 50 in that place, it will be spared. Do you understand? Now, this is one formula which God follows. When you are in your land and you are upright, keeping the statutes, the judgment, the everything, God will spare that area. Did you hear that? Now listen to that. Mm -hmm. And Abraham answered and said, Right. Behold now, mm -hmm. I have taken upon me mm -hmm. to speak unto the Lord, right. which am but dust and ashes. Right. Peradventure, mm -hmm. they shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Mm -hmm. Will thou destroy all the city for the sake of the five? Five. Now you see the number is going to five. Only five. <laughs> Imagine. When a place is, God is destroying a place, will spare this place because of five people. Right? Let's hear. And if, if there be 45, the, I will not destroy it. The, run, the number is going to 45. And he, and he spake unto him again and right? said, Peradventure, there be 40 found there. And he said, I no, will not do it. No, it's down again. The number, and, the place is spread if there is only 40. Right? And if he said take unto another him, five. Let's take another five. Right? And he said unto him, Yeah? Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Ah, oh, Lord. And I will speak. You know, only 40. Would you, would you spare sort of, if there are only 40 who are upright? Listen to the answer. And I will speak. Mm -hmm. adventure there to be 30 found there. He's pleading. He's pleading. And he, he said, uh -huh. I will not do it. I will not do it. If it's 30 only, I, I will not do it. I will not do it. Listen to that. Uh -huh. And he said, and he said, behold now, uh -huh. I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord. Ah, let, let me bother you too much. You know, he's fighting for his nephew. Listen to that. Uh -huh. Your adventure, there uh -huh. shall be 20 found Maybe there. 20 only, God. 20 only. Would you spare the Only 20. And I remember in, in Sister White's quotation, sometimes it says, in the Laodicean church, there is one person. It was in the year 1882. It says, if there is one 
in 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 every 20 there was one righteous in 20 in that year 1882 now i don't know the ratio the ratio of the of the righteous as a uh, against the wicked uh, in this period in 2021 i don't know maybe it's now in every thousand days one because we see the number 144,000 squeezed to until I don't know how many are left after 144,000 are selected. Maybe it's the ratio of the righteous versus wicked could be one in one, one in every million, there's one. Then you hear people breaking and saying, we have got a trillion supporters, trillion this and that, we have expanded. And you're talking, you are counting tears. Don't count tears, count the wheat. Now you see, Lord is trying to count the wheat, and he's, he's going the number to twenty. If you find twenty who are righteous in Sodom, would you destroy it? Listen to that. Yeah. And he said, mm -hmm. "I have taken upon me to speak to the Lord. Right? But adventure there shall be twenty found there. Twenty only. And he said, "I will not destroy it for and twenty said, No, no, no. I won't destroy it. They're, they're communicating a secret with the prophet." Secret. He's he's actually, you know, in every way. When Abraham was living, all the people who came next to Abraham were blessed. Even when he left a tent or an altar and relocated to another place, everyone who came to worship at the altar which he had destroyed and gone to another place were blessed. Just the altar itself. But now listen, how, how, why were they blessed? Because he was highest intelligence. He was a central intelligence of heaven. Did you hear? He would do, make sure you are spared when God is planning to destroy you. This is what he was. He was a central CIO of heaven. He was somebody who God will whisper everything. You know, everything pertaining to anybody. So that's why he was somebody who, when he said this one was my friend, that friend, Lord, the nephew, was being blessed because of him. You understand? So he was somebody, a figure, who God would trust that he is in charge of the earth for him. Did you understand? Now listen to, listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> The and he said, <laughs> and he said, yeah. oh, Lord, no, let not the Lord be angry. Now he's still going down with the number. <laughs> and I will speak yet but this once. I want, just give me one more, one more pleading. Listen to that. Right? Per adventure. Per adventure. There be ten found there. Now the number is going to ten. Imagine, ten only. And he said, I will not destroy said, it for ten. Uh, for ten. I still not, I'm not going to destroy. We just pack our bags and go back to heaven. We're not destroying it. And I said, it's 10, 10. Imagine, yeah, you're breaking. I, I remember sometime when, <laughs> when we had been taken for kneeling in church and then people were now scared to kneel. And the people thought they've overcome, they've accomplished. By doling these people, you know, de 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 depriving people of their liberty to kneel. They, they dulled them, you understand? Now they thought, ah, now we have done it, we have done it, we have done it. Someone was even breaking. In our place it used to be there, now there's nothing. You are counting tears. And the people who have deprived of their liberty to serve their God. This is what you are counting. Now we are going to ten. Ten only in the, in the, in the nation of, of Sodom. Only ten. And this prophet is still negotiating with God for ten. Listen to that. <laughs> and he said, and he I will said, not destroy it. I won't destroy it. It for ten's ten. sake. Only ten. And the Lord went his way. Listen to that. And as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, mm -hmm. and Abraham mm -hmm. returned unto his place. So the deal was done on ten. So he knew, Abraham knew that deal done. If there are ten, then I know my nephew uh, Lot will be amongst the ten. So the deal was sealed. Do you understand? Why did he stop at 10? Why didn't he go to 5? Why didn't he go to 1? He knew that in that number of 10, Lot will also qualify. But one thing he was so you know, shocked about is to find even the wife of Lot did not belong to the 10. The son-in-laws, 
and the children, they did not belong to the ten. The ten only had Lot and just a number of children going out. That's where the ten was. Do you understand? Now, how does God speak to his people? How does God deal with his people? Does he deal with his people outside the prophet's knowledge? No. He whispers his secret to the prophet. Did you? Now, let's hear. Let's hear more. Let me give you another exposition. This one was a bit long, isn't it? Um, go to Genesis 32, verse 1 and 2. There. <laughs> 32. Right. We are still in the Old Testament, brethren. We haven't got to the New Testament. How God speaks to the people. Right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jacob mm -hmm. went on his way, mm -hmm. and the angels of God met him. Now, we are talking of this guy, a descendant of Abraham, the one who is the author of the 12 tribes, the father, the one who is also the author of the name Israel. That's Jacob. Did you hear that? When I talk about Jacob, it's like I'm going to leap very high because I'm talking of the, the, you know, the OG of the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you understand? Now here, uh, Jacob, I repeat, went on his way. Went on his way. And the angels of God met him. You see, he was fleeing Esau. You know what cheating he had done. But cheating for the rightful place for him. But he did take it the wrong way. Yeah, there are so many people who want to do things the wrong way. And yet they could have waited for their own rightful way, which God will bless, it, bless them. But now he has fled from Esau. Yeah? That's Jacob we're talking about. And do you see, God doesn't have... Abraham is dead. That's why... Jacob was blessed by Isaac because Isaac was on the verge of dying. So he, he blessed Jacob before he died. So, but this someone who has succeeded the prophetic, the prophetic line. Did you hear? This prophet now is Jacob, but he is uh, running for dear life from his brother Esau. Now, but God, God was aware of what was happening in the, in the clan of Isaac, how he had taken and cheated and taken his rightful place, which was declared to Rebecca when she was pregnant, that the younger, the, the older, will serve the younger. When they were, there was a lot of movement in the tummy, and Rebecca inquired of God, what is this? Because there's two men of uh, nations inside there. There's one nation which belongs to God and one nation which is fighting those who belong to God, which was Jacob and Esau. Jacob was for God and Esau was against. And Esau was the firstborn. You know exactly when we start talking about the, the, the bed, the bed and you know, how he looked like, it, he looked red. He was so bushy with the hair. You understand? All those were qualities. The hair is a quality and a talent to lead. But the firstborn in Israel, the firstborn was a priest. Do you understand? So he had all the qualities of a priest. But God declared in the Tami that the, the older will serve the younger as an allegory of our time. Yeah, you know the older in our time. Now, I need not mention, you know exactly if you, the Spirit is inspiring you, the older shall save the younger. Do you understand? It's a takeover like that. This is what Jacob had done. So Jacob is fleeing the brother. He's taken, he's taken <laughs> the birthright. Now, but God summoned the angels to meet him, the prophet of the hour. Now let's hear, let's hear from that, yeah? Mm -hmm. And when Jacob mm -hmm. saw them, mm -hmm. he said, He said, This is God's host. He, he, uh, already he identified the host coming to him. This is God's host, right? And he called the name of that place, <laughs> Mahananaim. Right, listen to, I don't know how to pronounce it, this Mahananaim, I don't know. Now, he calls that place because he has met the angels. He has met God. In that place. So he left a name for that. This is how God now was coming to this prophet face to face. You understand? He has met God 
there when he was fleeing against Esau. Right? Now, let's hear, let's hear more. Yeah, right. Let's, let's go again to Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. It's a bit long, you know. Want to, want to know how does God communicate with, with the, the, the prophets or with the people? How does it deal? We saw in dreams with Abraham there were dreams and there were face-to-face -face communications. And then Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro. We are, we are now to somebody. We, we didn't dwell much on Jethro. We could have seen how he, God was, uh, uh, you know, whispering to him about when, you know, Laban, we had cheated. How he was cheating this guy. Yeah. But God was coming in when he was being cheated. First was cheated, given a, given a wrong wife. Next was cheated even the, the animals he was heading and the, those species which are rare were given to him and the, 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 the Laban took the species which are common but God changed over and those were rare were so much against those which were not rare. So we know all that. That one I give you as a homework. Go and study how from that chapter. But now we are, let's go to another prophet of the hour, which was Moses. Now Moses, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, let's hear He huh? kept the flock of Jethro, his father. You know how much he had fled when he had killed an, an Egyptian. And then the thing was a secret. But when it was known, he was scared for his life, so he had to run away and go to Midian. Right? So now he is heading the, 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 flock, the of Jethro. flock of Jethro. Jethro was a priest there. That's one thing you should know. Jethro was a, uh, a priest. Right, let's hear. Mm -hmm. The priest of Midian. Priest of Midian. And right? he led mm -hmm. the flock to the backside of the desert. Right. And came to a mountain of God. Right. Even to Horeb. Right. And the angel of the Lord. Right, listen to that. Appeared unto him in a flame this, of fire. This was no dream. This was not a dream. This was face to face. He, God came face to face to Moses, and Moses saw the flame burning from a bush, and listen to that, huh? And he looked, mm -hmm. and behold, right? the bush burned mm -hmm. with fire, mm -hmm. and the bush was not consumed. Yeah, that's one miracle, it was a miracle. The bush still remained, but there's fire. The fire is too much on that bush, but the bush remains green. It's a strange miracle, isn't it? Right? And what? Uh -huh. And Moses said, I will now turn aside mm -hmm. and see this great sight. Right? Why the bush is not bent? Why is this bush not bent? Mm -hmm. And when the Lord mm -hmm. saw that he turned aside to see, mm -hmm. God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, mm -hmm. Moses, Moses. Mm -hmm. And he said, Here am I. Right? And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Mm -hmm. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Right? For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Right. So that's God. The bush, which was a strange miracle, it turned to be God. That was God. Right? Uh -huh. Moreover, he said, right? I am right. the God of thy father, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, right. the God of Isaac, mm -hmm. and the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Right. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, right. and they have heard of their cry by the reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Right. I am now come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, mm -hmm. and to bring them up out of the land unto a good and a large land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And to the place of the Canaanites, right. the Hittites, right. the Amorites. What is God doing? Communicating a secret to Moses. Do you hear that? He is communicating a big secret of the Exodus, of taking off the Israelites out of Egypt, which was a prophecy from Abraham. Abraham was told in a dream, no for sure that your seed will sojourn in a, in a, in a foreign city. In foreign country, but will come out. But now it's coming to Moses, and God is coming face to face with a burning wheel, commissioning this guy. That now we need to get things rolling. So that secret, Korah and Datan, 
and the Aaron and the Miriam and the Pharaoh were not there. It was Moses alone with the secret. Moses alone. This is how God communicated to that generation. He was now working with Moses. And at that time, there was no other prophet except Moses. Moses was the, was the, was the source of contact with heaven at that time. The, there is only one source, one pulpit, one Lord, one prophet at a given time. Did you hear that? Now, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Here we go up to verse 10. Verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, right. behold, the cry of the children of Israel mm -hmm. is come unto me. You see? And I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Only when the people of God have an oppression among them, and there is a cry, we heard that cry from Sodom and Gomorrah. Now there is a cry from the children who are busy laying bricks and crying to God, how long, how long? And even in Laodicea, the wheat is crying. Crying, how long is this abuse and that abuse? How long are we going to stay without the feast? How long are we going to stay without the prophet? How long are, how long are we going to keep the kids meeting in a wrong time? How long are we going to have the Lord's Supper and we are forced to say supper in a day meal? How long? All these cries, God says, the prophet, to make sure the deal is done and completely done and fulfilled forever. Right. Listen to that. <laughs> Come now, therefore. Come now, therefore. And I will send thee. I want now to send you unto Pharaoh. Unto Pharaoh. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Right. Do you see how God communicated to this prophet? Right? So, how did he communicate? He communicated with the angel, which came and the bush was burning. A strange thing. And then, when he, his attention was drawn to the bush, he communicated his commission. And all the things that happened to, for, to prove that uh, this is what I'm going to use for people to prove that is God has sent me. That was all unnecessary though, but God had to do that. This is the proof. This is the proof. Right. Now, um, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 and 19 there. So this is what Moses, you know, received communication from heaven. This is how he received it. Face to face. Right? Uh -huh. Verse 18. Right. And all the people saw the thunderings mm -hmm. and the lightnings mm -hmm. and the noise of the trumpet right. and the mountain smoking. Mm -hmm. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Right. You see? That time is when the, the Ten Commandments are going to be issued to Moses. Moses and the people, you know, there are people who also say, no, we, we also want to do for ourselves. We want to also be there. And what, you know, and they all were settled, uh, you know, sometimes they were settled around the, the, the mount. And the mountain started to quake. <laughs> and lightning and everything. They had to call Moses, 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 Moses. You go and talk to God. And hear everything and come back to us and tell us. They're the ones now to do that to Moses. Why? Because lest we die. You understand? And the mountain, they say, don't touch the mountain. Don't touch it lest you die. But Moses was there for 40 days, 40, 40 nights on top of the mountain. He did not die. Now, this was proof enough God did not talk to everyone there. But you see, they were all competing with him, the Korahs and the Tatran, 250 princesses competing that God also talks to us. The, the, when Moses was preaching there, they were also preaching there. You take too much to yourself it's, it, all the time. You want to be preaching. You are preaching all. We don't preach also. We also, you know, God is also with us. We, oh, the Spirit is in our heart. These people, they, they, they want to show the people they also have the Spirit. And some want to preach, showing even all these athletic movements to show that God has now gone into them. Let me tell you one thing. There is one pulpit at a given time which God uses. He has not changed. That now he has this pulpit there and that pulpit there, that pulpit there. That. There is one pulpit. You can marvel and enjoy. But there is one pulpit. 
when you are not subject to that pulpit, you lose out. Those people in the time of Noah, they had several pulpits there, which were swallowed by the flood. There was one pulpit which God used at that time, at that generation. The rest of the pulpits were just Java, Java, Java games, nothing to do with the salvation which was there in the time of Noah. There is one pulpit God uses at a given time, and the people who are supposed to be saved will feel it, that this is the pulpit that we should use. Not other pulpits, they're just coming to waste your time and keep you entertained until doomsday. There is one pulpit at a time. How does God speak to people in one pulpit? Right. Um, let's go. Uh, have you finished? Verse 19. Verse 19. Let's, yeah, 19. let's hear. Start from 18 so that we don't lose direction. Mm -hmm. And all the people <clears throat> right. saw the thunderings mm -hmm. and the lightnings mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. and the noise of the trumpet uh -huh. and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, right. They removed and stood afar off. Where were those pulpits? They are running away. You see that? There's one pulpit which remained. The pulpit of Moses. Listen to that. Uh -huh. And they said unto Moses, Listen to what they say. Speak thou with us. They are now know which pulpit is there. Listen to that. And we will hear. We, go, you, you go. Why were they wanting to go there with, together with Moses to crowd on the mount, listening to the Ten Commandments being given to Moses? Why would they want to be there? Why? So that they also claim to be one of the pulpits that God is using, isn't it? God made sure you will quack, you will thunder, you will smoke, you will do everything until they know that they are not qualified to be in that pulpit, pulpit to talk to God. Do you understand? Now listen to that. <laughs> but let not God speak yeah. with us, mm -hmm. lest we die. Right. And Moses said unto the people, mm -hmm. Fear not. Fear not. For God is come to prove you. Look at the pulpit which God was using. While those pulpits are scared. You see, they were all Israel. But they're different pulpits. We saw it when Kora and Datan died. The next day, 3,000 people died. Do you understand? There were several pulpits which were calling themselves Israel. So these were the Sabbath keepers of the day, isn't it? Now, how many pulpits are there in the Sabbath keepers of the day? How many are they? But listen, wait for the quake of the mountain. Yeah, the thunder, the smoke. The people will know which pulpit God is using. Now, we have been in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic. Even this is a quake and a thunder. People will behold the pulpit which was being used by God. And that pulpit, those people who were adherent to that pulpit, none of them were touched. Did you understand what I said? None of them were touched. People will know the pulpit. Will know the pulpit. Right, let's hear. Let's hear more. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you another exposition. Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. You know what has been happening? You know mm, what has been happening in that area. Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. Let's hear. <clears throat> verse 18. Verse 18. And he carried away. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. This right? is one. Mm hmm 31 verse 18. Verse 18, yeah, 1 8. Mm -hmm. And he gave unto Moses, right? when he had made an uh -huh. end of communing with him mm -hmm. upon the Mount of Sinai, right? two tables of testimony, right. the tables of stone. So the proper pulpit now has been given two tables of stones with the Ten Commandments. Those pulpits that wanted to compete with him to go to the Mount, they are supposed to be told by Moses. Whatever happened for 40 days, 40 nights, they're supposed to be related to by the prophet. Because it's only the prophet who has the right to listen to God and have all the secrets first and then devise the secrets to the people. Do you understand? This is what happened. Now let's hear, let's hear another exposition in Genesis chapter 41, chapter 41 verse 28. Before we start about what is happening in our time, isn't it? <laughs> Genesis 41. Right, 41 verse 28. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. This is the thing right? which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. Right. What God is about to do, sheweth unto Pharaoh. Right. So this uh, Moses, before he took uh, the children of Israel out of, he went to Pharaoh. He went to Pharaoh. He has, he has got full confidence 
that God has sent him. He, he was not beating about the bush, trying to think, oh, is it me or is it No, no, no. You are given a full, a full panorama of evidence by God that you are the one. And he is now confident he is the one. And the very first thing he calls to Pharaoh. So you remember, this is Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Not the Pharaoh who had Joseph, but Pharaoh who does not. And Joseph, who is Joseph? Is Jesus. There is Pharaoh who does not know Jesus. Yeah, The Pharaoh who did not know Jesus, and he, he, that's the leadership. The leadership who does not know Jesus is where he, Moses went. How do you know he does not know Jesus if he's still in pagan feast? Is paganizing himself and yet claiming to be a leader. He does not know Jesus. If you know Jesus, you can't be talking of the other camps, the gods. You understand? God is a God, his own camp. And the, all these are the feasts. And you are none there in those feasts of God, in the camp of God. I told you that God knows his gangsters. His gangsters are Abraham. Was his gangster was keeping statutes and government and, and judgments and everything that is a gangster to, to God. But when you join the other gangsters and have all their marks and all their, their slogans and everything, you are not a gangster to this gangster in heaven. Did you understand? Now, Moses went to Pharaoh. Yeah, he now knows he's been sent, he has got full confidence. That whoever is behind him is for sure uh, using him. Listen to that. Now it goes to Pharaoh. Listen to that. Listen to that. Yeah. This is the thing mm -hmm. which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. Right? What God is about to do is sure Pharaoh, it unto Pharaoh. 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 God is about to do something in Egypt. That's Moses talking to Pharaoh. Like, just like we say to the Pharaoh of the day here. God is about to perform Ezekiel 9. Pharaoh, listen. He's about to perform Ezekiel 9. If allow the people to go and keep the feast. That's what Moses was pleading with Pharaoh. Allow the people to go out and perform the Passover. And keep the statutes and judgments. Allow them to go to Canaan. This is, this is what Moses was pleading with Pharaoh about. Now, like we are pleading with Pharaoh. Allow the people to keep the feast. Allow the people to keep the camp meeting on the right time. Pharaoh, allow the people to keep the camp meeting and the Lord's Supper at the right time. Allow the people to keep the new moon. Allow them. This is what Moses was said to Pharaoh about. Listen to that. Listen to that. <laughs> Behold. Behold. There come seven years of plenty. Right. Throughout the land of Egypt. Right. And they shall arise mm -hmm. after them seven years of famine. Right. And all the plenty... Genesis 41. Right. I'm reading the right one. So Are you reading the right one? Are you Genesis 41. The one for Joseph. For Joseph. That's Joseph. But let, let me tell you one thing. Pharaoh did not know. Pharaoh did not know that his doomsday had come. His doomsday was when he did not comply with the prophet. That was his doomsday. Even when Moses had the last plague, the one for the death of the firstborns. Pharaoh was spared, but his firstborn died. And when they went out of Egypt, and they came nearer the Red Sea, Pharaoh was following with the army, and he beheld all his people Going on the Red Sea and being swallowed with the Red Sea when he was there, watching them. Now, that was his doomsday. So, if we see what all that scenario, God was using a, prof a prophet for that. You understand? That's why we say, when now we are pleading, take the people out or allow them to keep the feast. It's either they are out. Or allow them to keep the feast. This is not a joke. This is a command command from God. Allow the people. Take rewrite your manual. If you are allowed to write a manual, because the Bible is sufficient. Rewrite it and put the feast, the statutes of God, 
as they were presented by A.T. Jones and Wekwana. Put them, write them, and allow the people to follow what God wants. And who sister White warned, they say, though A.T. Jones and Wekwana were rejected, the still the same message will come back. This is pleading with fire. Allow the people to worship God according to what he has designed in the Bible. Otherwise, Ezekiel 9 is on the corner. It's coming. The firstborns were all wiped in the, in, in, in the land of Egypt. They were all wiped out. And when God has promised what he has promised, now the firstborn we know in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, uh, up to ten, read it when it says, Slay utterly old and young, come not near anyone with a mark. God means exactly what He says. God, somebody should tell you, God means exactly what He has said in the Bible. Sister White clearly tells us in Testimonies to Ministers, page 445, that the same as the, uh, Re Revelation chapter 7, the sealing period in Revelation chapter 7. And Ezekiel 9 is the same period. This is the ceiling. It's not something that has passed. It's something happening now. So the prophet of the hour is there. Allow the prophet of the hour to preach and do not interpose between the people and God. This is what Moses was pleading with Pharaoh about. But when God said he was going to take the Israelites out, for sure I didn't fail to do that. For sure he did, as he commanded. As he, sh he, sh he showed Abraham in a dream. And that was it. Now, let's go to another prophet. In, I think it's the one that I gave you in Genesis chapter 41. That's Joseph. Listen to that. Verse 28. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is the thing right? which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. Right. What God is about to do, mm -hmm. issue with it unto Pharaoh. Right. You see, you remember what happened when Pharaoh... Because when you read from before that chapter, you find that Pharaoh had had a dream. Yeah? And that dream, he had seven fat cows and seven lean cows. This is the dream. Lean cows are there, they are thin. Yeah? But what happened there is the lean cow, cows, the seven lean cows, they went to swallow the fat cows. You see, this is a mystery, isn't it? Things that are not uh, practical. This is what Pharaoh he, he, he dreamt of. But at that time, Joseph was in the, in the prison. You know, you remember how he got to prison because he, of this allegation, which was a false allegation that he wanted to lie with Pharaoh's wife, which was the other way around. It, it was the reverse, actually. And God knew that. But in, in the prison, he had interpreted a dream between the baker and the butler. And the, the dream came true that the one who was supposed to die was caught up and died. And the one who was supposed to be discharged was discharged. And that one was discharged. When he heard that Pharaoh has a strange dream and looks for someone who can interpret it, that person who knew that Joseph interpreted his dream when he was in prison, went to tell Pharaoh and said, there's a man in your prison who knows how to interpret dreams, interpreted mine, and it came to pass. So that's how Joseph was released, to come and interpret this dream. That's what we are reading now in Genesis chapter 41, verse 18. Let's hear that. Mm -hmm. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty mm -hmm. throughout all the land of Egypt. Right, those are the fat cows, seven fat cows. Seven years of plenty. Mm -hmm. And they shall rise after them. Mm -hmm. Seven years of famine. Right. So the seven lean cows or slim ones are the seven years of famine. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. Right. And the famine shall consume the land. There will be a famine on the next seven years. After the seven years of plenty. There will be a famine and there is hunger throughout the whole world. Mm -hmm. And the plenty, the plenty shall not be known right? in the land mm -hmm. by reason of that famine following, for right. it shall be very grievous. Right. Mm -hmm. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Right. It is because the thing is established by God, right. and God will shortly bring it to pass. Right. Now, right. therefore, mm -hmm. let Pharaoh look out a man, right. discreet so now, and wise. There is a task sent to Pharaoh. Look, look out for one man. Discreet and wise. And that person should be discreet and 
Wives. And set him over the land of Egypt. Set that person over the land of Egypt. Why? Uh -huh. Let Pharaoh do this. Right. And let him appoint officers over the land. And to take up the fifth see, part of the land. The, 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 the ruler of Egypt is being instructed by a prophet. What you need to do, take all the plenty food in the seven years of land. Appoint this, do this, do that, do that. It's a prophet. It's a prophet of God. Now, he is instructed by God to go and instruct his ruler. To prepare him for the years of famine which will come and how they will tackle that famine. God communicates his secret to the prophet. Is it? Is it how he communicates? Yes. And this ruler benefited out of the prophet. Benefited out of that one man who God chose. Now, we, we, we have events occurring here. Pandemic and everything. They are all written down in black and white in the prophets. They are there. But does God not have a prophet at this time? Who will know exactly what happens and for how long? And after that, what next? And what next? And what next? There should be a man who God is using. Who knows everything in black and white. Like it was in the time of Joseph. Joseph knew everything in black and white. What will happen and after the seven years of plenty? Next is the seven years. At least this prophet knew the next 14 years, how it looked like. So God made sure this prophet came at a crisis where this, the world was going to slumber into, 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 into famine. And people, many people were going to die. So the prophet was there to instruct, to say, to prepare for that time of disaster. So that the disaster does not kill loads of people. Right, listen to that. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. And, sorry, mm -hmm. let Pharaoh do this right. and let him appoint officers over the land mm -hmm. and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. in the seven plenteous years. Right. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come mm -hmm. and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh See, and let them keep orders, food in the cities. Orders coming from a prophet. Where there is no prophet, people perish. Why do people perish? There is no prophet. But when we acknowledge there is a prophet, we want perish. This is what Proverbs chapter 28 will tell you. There is, where there is no seer, people will perish. And then you what you say, no, we have no more prophet. We have no more prophet. You are perishing if you don't have. You are perishing. You can see some people are telling people that a vaccine is 666. Where there is no prophet, people will perish. What? That's being careless. Telling your people not to get a vaccine. You are being careless. Somebody who wants to protect the people will tell them exactly what will protect them at that time. You understand? You don't leave your people dying. I saw someone say, it's up to you whether you want a vaccine or you don't want a vaccine. We are not here to tell you. We are not here. You are being an irresponsible leader. Where there is a prophet, they will give instructions to the people when there is a crisis. And give them instructions. And when God has inspired the scientific way to bring a cure, you inspire the people to be saved, to run for dear life. And you, and you claim to God that I have inspired them, go and have this vaccine so that God is the one who inspired the scientists to make sure the people are protected. Who do you think God can inspire? When there is a crisis which has to do with science, he inspires the scientists. That's a good prophet. Not telling people, do as you like. In, in Moses, when they came to the Red Sea, he could have said, oh, the, there is an army coming on fire. Uh, um, whoever wants to run to the mountain, no, run over when you want. There was going to be chaos. The leader is there to pass orders to the people he is leading. Tell them how to protect themselves. This is what Moses did. He leader doesn't say, oh, it's up to you whether you want to or whether you don't want to. What a leader is that? irresponsible. The leader has to tell the people what to do to preserve the people. You understand? So here, we are talking of most of, of 
the prophet Joseph at that time is the one who was instructed by God as to how to interpret this dream and how to protect the people for the pandemic, for the for the famine which was coming <coughs> on the way. Right. Let's hear. Uh, you, you are on this. Uh, you are going to go as far as 36, 36. What verse are you now? No, 37. Yeah, okay, you've passed it. But let's, let's see another prophet, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> we cannot go to the New Testament without seeing what Daniel also did. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Let's hear. <laughs> verse 19. Mm -hmm. You know what had happened in chapter 2. You know how God uh, made Nebuchadnezzar dream of a funny dream as well. A statue ahead of God. Yeah? And a chest of brass, of, of, of <coughs> silver, and a, a belly of brass, and the thighs of uh, iron, and then the feet, the, 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 foot, the legs were partly iron and partly clay, and the ten toes, partly iron and partly clay, and then a big, a big ball, a big stone coming to crush the ten toes, and this this hidden king is dreaming such a funny, funny dream. But he knows among his people there should be somebody who can come and interpret the dream. Let's hear that. Let's hear that. Ahead. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then mm. was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Right. In a night you remember vision. why Daniel was called in? Because the, the, the king, usually they, they call the people who think they are clever, they are very, very high-minded, you know. They, they want prophets right now. Who do you think they can call? They can call all those people who they respect, thinking they know. They, 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 oh, he's got a PhD, or oh, he's got a theology degree, he's got what he's going to tell us about the prophets. They, they call all those. This is what the, the, the king Nebuchadnezzar did. He called all the sorcerers, sorcerers. Uh, the witcher, the wizards, the everyone who came thinking they are we, we've come to interpret the dreams. They have been even getting money for interpreting dream, dreams. And these people are very loaded, rich people, wizards and the sorcerers and whatever. You know, and like we see the wizards and sorcerers in a new mod modern world with the, the degrees coming to say they will interpret Daniel and Revelation. They come. They, this is what they did to Nebuchadnezzar. They came with their degrees of sorcery and sorcery and, 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 and wizards. They came. And they, 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 imagine when they were in front of her, I mean, in front of Nebuchadnezzar. Who did they, how did they introduce themselves? I'm so and so. I'm a wizard. Or I'm a sorcerer. I've got a degree in sorcery. You know, I'm, and Father said, hmm. hmm. I've got several of them, several of, of degrees, of, of demons, of sorcery, of, of making sure things can change. When I say something, when I say to the tree, wither, the tree will wither. In front of the tree, I say, yeah, I've got the, 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 the highest demon on earth which can unleash things. You understand? This is what we are seeing. People who think they have got a PhD and be what what in theology and in whatever and then whatever they come and say, I did this in that year and I did this and that. Oh, hey, let's hear about Daniel and Revelation. This is what happened. And Pharaoh said, You come with all your degrees. And yet you can't today. I don't want to tell you the dream. I want you to tell me what I dreamt. Finish! That was the end of story. I want you, if you got all those talents of sorcery, yeah, people who can declare the future, yeah, whatever you call them, they, they were there. They said, tell us the dream. So, no, 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 no. I won't tell. You are used to cheating people. Tell me the dream yourself. And then tell me the interpretation. Oh, all the degrees fell off. <laughs> That's why they had to call Daniel. Then Daniel came with the degree of the Most High. He was a prophet. Now Daniel is a prophet. He's going to prove the God who, who ordained him as a prophet. Knows what Pharaoh dreamt. 
and knows how to interpret it. All of them. So, but he first shows how he got the revelation. Listen to that. Read. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. Then, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Night vision. So he was sleeping at night. Then Daniel blessed the name of the God of heaven. Right. And so Daniel answered. When he just talked to God, you know, uh, Daniel kept the daily. He was praying at the third hour and the ninth hour. So he prayed at the third hour, ninth hour. And God came to his dream in a vision. Because the vision and the dream, they're almost the same. Sometimes you can think that you are dreaming it, it was a vision. So he came in a, when he was sleeping in a vision, night vision. How, how do you think the night vision was? He was sleeping. But for him to distinguish that this is a dream, this is a vision, that will need another intelligence. So God communicated to Daniel and told him the dream, the whole dream for Nebuchadnezzar and also the whole interpretation in a vision. You see this degree, the PhD, coming from heaven, not from these secular schools, but from heaven. That's a PhD which God gives the man he uses. So here, let's read from that corner there. Let's hear Daniel chapter uh, 2 verse 19. How did he get that dream? How did Daniel, you know, the sorcerers and the wizards and the, the what do you call them? Varoi in Shona. Witch. The witch. They were listening to God's man. The prophet with a PhD which comes from the throne of heaven. Do you understand? Listen to the dream. <laughs> Daniel answered and said, Right? Blessed be the name of God forever right. and ever. Right. For wisdom and might are his. He starts by praising whoever gave him his degree and his dream and his interpretation. Yeah? And what? <laughs> After he had interpreted everything, to Nebuchadnezzar. This is how he became a prime minister. Because you saw Joseph interpreting the dream of the seven kind and seven plenty and seven. He, he said, select a man. Who do you think Pharaoh selected? The very one who came with the dream, with the interpretation. He came to interpret the dream on, and he became the governor. He's the one who did the work, the project, in the, in the years of famine. He's the one who was the chief HOD, head of department. He was a head of department, of that department which God showed him. Now he, Daniel became also a prime minister to rule with Nebuchadnezzar because he has seen a history which will go up to our time, to 2021. He, 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 he said what will happen to the earth. A long prophetic line up to 2021. This mighty prophet. This is why Nebuchadnezzar took him to rule with him as the prime minister. Now, I'm talking about the prophet. The prophets we were in the Old Testament. Right? Let's see, let's hear then. We have talked so much about the Old Testament. Let's go to our time. Let's start with Sister White. Because if I start with the uh, Martin Luther, John Knox, the Wesley Brothers, it's no value to you because these were reformers. But when you start with Sister White, who we all know when we were awake, when we were uh, 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 alive. At least we believed in Sister White because she was more recent to us, right? So let's start with Sister White at the beginning, right? We will see that uh, her, her own son, Elder uh, W.C. White, her own son, had an interview with her one time. Let's go to that interview in CCH 14.2. Right, let's hear. 14.2. Mm -hmm. At one time, mm -hmm. quite late in Miss White's life, mm -hmm. her son, 
Elder W.C. White, right. seeking information to help those who were less informed, mm -hmm. made this inquiry of him. So the son wanted, you know, the son like my son, who sometimes read with me. So we want to know, Mom, are you really inspired? So the son will always want to understand more. Are you really inspired of God? This is what the son of Sister White was doing. Yeah, you know, she, he knows the, the mother is really inspired, but wants more evidence, isn't it? Now, yes, uh, their son says, seeking information to help those who were less informed, because the son was more informed. Now, listen to that. Uh -huh. So those, to, to help those who were less informed, he made this inquiry of her. Right? Mother. Mother, mm -hmm. you often speak of matters being revealed to you in the night season. Right. So, W.C. White, the son of Sister White, often hears the mother told, telling him that there's something that has been revealed by God. In the night season. In, at night. So he says, Mother, you often speak of matters being revealed to you in the night season. Listen to that. Uh -huh. You speak of dreams. You often speak of dreams. In which light comes to you. In which there is light coming to you. We all have dreams. We, all, we are all dreamers in this family. How do you know? How then? You are a dreamer. My dad is a dreamer. And all the people in this house are dreaming. So how do you know? Listen to that. Mm -hmm. How do you know How do you that know? God is speaking to you in the dream of which you so frequently speak? Right. But there is one person here in this family. Maybe there were five. Let's say there were five. They are sleeping in their bedrooms like you do. But you wake up in the morning and say, you saw a dream. God inspired you and showed you in a dream. How do you know? How, how do you know? He uh, uh, says... You speak of dreams in which light comes to you. We all have dreams. Everyone has been dreaming here. Yeah? How do you know that God is speaking to you in the dream of which you so frequently speak? How do you know if that dream is someone who say, I dream people, people were in a wedding, this and that and that and that and that and that and that. How do you know it comes from God? I've heard people say, oh, you have been eating too much, that's why you are dreaming. Some people will answer like that. But how do you know this dream is coming from God? Right, listen to the answer. Because. Because. Listen she to, answered. She is answering. Because. The same angel messenger stands beside me instructing me in the visions of the night as he stands beside me in instructing me the visions of the day right because it's one person that same angel messenger mm -hmm. comes to speak to me all the time that's what sister white answered listen to that mm -hmm. because she mm -hmm. answered mm -hmm. the same angel messenger mm -hmm. stands beside me Mm -hmm. instructing me in the visions of the night mm -hmm. as stand beside me instructing me the visions of the day. Right. If I have a vision in the night, the same person comes. And if I have a vision during the day, the same person comes. So it's continuous with that person. This is the answer from Sister White. My, uh, my question is, we saw Abraham and all other saints in the Old Testament. They had dreams. They had visions. They saw somebody talking to him. The, the bush was burning and somebody was there talking to Moses. Now we have someone in the Christian era, which the book you have, CCH, Councils on Church, you have it. And that person also relates exactly the same as what Abraham was saying to Lot. Had visions, had dreams, Face to face. So, Sister White is saying she has dreams. She has visions. My question is, does God still maintain the same communication he was doing with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joseph, Daniel? Name them all. 
does he still have the same communication which he was doing in the Old Testament? For those who say God a hundred times spoke to us through 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 prophets, but in this time speaks to us in Hebrews one verse one speaks to us through the Son of God. What is Sister White talking about here? Is Sister White lying that God speaks to him, to her, through dreams and visions? Is she lying? No. When you say the prophets were only used in the Old Testament time, in the New Testament there are no prophets, are you not ashamed when Sister White says that? Now, here, let's hear. Um, finish, finish that paragraph. The heavenly... The heavenly being yeah. referred to mm -hmm. was at other times spoken of as the angel, right? my guide, mm -hmm. my instructor, This is what she related to the sun. She will, the heavenly being referred to, Sister White will refer to this heavenly being who came to her as my guide, my angel, my instructor. So she had an instructor. Is it? Is it proof enough we have prophets? In the New Testament. And don't tell me that it ended with Sister White. Where is the verse which says the prophets will end in 1844 with Sister White or in 1915? Give us proof. That the, the proof says the prophets will end with 1915. After 1915 we have no more prophets. We want a scripture to the law and to the testimony which proves that. Now, uh, let's hear CCH 14.4. There was no confusion mm -hmm. in the mind of the prophet. When she was dealing with the angels or the visions or the dreams, there was no confusion in the mind of the prophet. Right? And what? No question as to the revelation that came during the hours of the night. Mm -hmm. For the very circumstances in connection with it made it clear that it was the instruction from God. Right. So when she was with the angel or with a dream, she clearly knew it was coming from, from God. This is why we believe her as a prophet. Because she knew whatever dream she did was God guiding her. She was guided by not only the blinking that you say, is she blinking? Is she not? Is she not breathing? Is not? She was guided by visions, dreams, instructors, angels. This is what she was. Mind you, she saw. She met the angels in a vision. She met the angels in a dream. Did you understand that? Right. Let's hear. Um, point five. Same C C H fourteen point five. Uh -huh. At other times, at other times, mm -hmm. while Miss White was praying, right, speaking or writing, mm -hmm. visions were given to her. Right, this is how they came. While she was praying, speaking, speaking, writing. When is, when I'm speaking right now, how do you know there is a vision that is come? Because you don't see a vision. So when she was talking to people. People did not know that what she was talking, while, while she was talking, she was in a vision. How would people guess she was in a vision? How? There was no way to prove. What did the people hear? People heard her talking, but people did not know she was in a vision. We are being told here that when she was talking to the people, she was in a vision. But... Was there anyone to prove she was in a vision? Listen to that. Mm -hmm. Those about her right? would not be aware of the vision. The visions, when somebody is talking and God is inspiring that person to say out a message, those around who are watching and beholding her talking would not uh, be aware. They don't guess it was a vision. So what is that to us? We could be in these days in one of the pulpits where God is putting someone in a vision. And what we hear is a message. Did you understand? We don't even guess that message is a vision. Now, read, read on this here. Mm -hmm. 
those about her right. would not be aware of the vision mm -hmm. unless there was a brief pause if she was speaking or praying publicly. Mm -hmm. At one time she wrote, right. While engaged in earnest prayer, mm -hmm. I was lost to everything around me. Right. The room was filled with light mm -hmm. and I was hearing a message to an assembly. Sorry, and I was hearing a message to an assembly that seemed to be part of the church. Mm -hmm. Of the many visions given to Miss White, through her long ministry of 70 years, mm -hmm. the longest vision lasted four hours and the shortest, just a brief moment. Right. So it says, her largest vision, while she was talking to people, lasted for four hours. So, her, last, her, large, her largest vision, four hours. And then people say, oh, you are preaching a long sermon. Sometimes you don't know it's a vision or it's a sermon. To you it's long, but somebody, somebody could be kept in a vision for four hours when you are listening. Did you hear that? This is what Sister White was saying. Sometimes the length of a vision was just a brief moment. Just a, a yes, that's a vision. You're answering somebody and say yes, that's a vision. No, that's a vision. And when she was preaching, it could take long hours. Why she was not stopping the sermon, she was in a vision. Now let's hear, let's hear more, more about it, right? Uh -huh. At one time she wrote, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Often. Often, mm. they were for half an hour. Right. Often or a little has, longer. Often, the visions took half an hour. But who knew Sister White was in a vision? She alone knew she was in a vision. But those people who were watching her did not know she was in a vision. Read, read one. Uh -huh. But no single rule can be stated which would cover all the visions. Mm -hmm. For it was as Paul wrote. What did Paul write? God who at sundry times right? and in diverse manners right? spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Mm -hmm. The light was imparted to the prophet through visions. Right. But the prophet did not write while well in vision. Right. His work was not a mechanical task. Right. So it was not that when she is writing, she will write in a vision. No. The prophet was not writing while she was in a vision. Right. And mm -hmm. his work was not a mechanical task. Mm -hmm. Except on rare occasions, the Lord did not give him the very words to speak. Mm -hmm. No, nor did the angel guide the hand of the prophet in the precise words to record. Mm -hmm. From the mind, right. enlightened by visions, mm -hmm. the prophet spoke right. or wrote the words that would convey the light and instruction to his audience, mm -hmm. whether they read the message or they heard it orally. Right. So, this is what Sister White is telling us. From the mind... Right. Uh, 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 I want you to repeat that sentence. From the mind. The except on rare occasions. Except on rare occasions. Mm -hmm. The Lord did not give him the very words to speak. Right. Nor did the angel guide the hand of the prophet in the precise words to record. Right. From the mind. Mm -hmm. Enlightened by visions. Mm -hmm. The prophet spoke or wrote the words that would convey the light and instruction to his audience. So... What God will do is will give a message, something she will behold when she's after the, the vision. She will write in her own words what God showed her. Do you understand that? In her own words, she would write about what she had seen in the vision or in the dream. She will put it down. Right, this is what how she worked. Now let's 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 go further to um to CCH fifteen point one. We might ask We might ask mm -hmm. how the mind of the prophet was enlightened. How then was the mind of the prophet enlightened? I'm saying the topic is how does God speak to us? And how is the mind of the prophet enlightened, right? Mm -hmm. How did he gain 
the information and instruction he was given to impart to the people. How then does the prophet gain the instruction and the information and the information to impart to the people? To impart to the people. How does he gain that? Right, listen. Mm -hmm. Just as no one rule mm -hmm. can be established for the giving of the visions. Right. So, no one rule can be established governing the way the prophet received the inspired message. Right. No one rule can govern the way the, is the prophet uh, received the inspired messages, right? Right, listen, let's hear. Mm -hmm. In each case, in each case, however, mm -hmm. it was a very vivid experience, right? That made an indelible impression on the mind of the prophet, right? And just as that which we see and experience mm -hmm. makes a much deeper impression on our minds, right? That what we only hear, so, sorry, right? And just as that which we see and experience mm -hmm. makes a much deeper impression on our minds mm -hmm. than what we only hear. Right. So, the representations to the prophets, where they seemed to witness dramatic events, mm -hmm. made deep and lasting impressions on their minds. Right. So, what they had beheld, let's say, for example, you have somebody who wants to marry someone. And that somebody, you visualize, you ask, and that, that woman you want to marry, uh, once was married with so and so, and it didn't work. So, but then you have another story which looks like that, where things ended wrongly. So that story has a lasting impression on your mind. God makes sure when you are beholding what is about to happen, you flash back at something that is similar, that ended up wrongly. Did you get the point? So that is an example. So let's say there is something that you want. So it means something that is about to happen. God will put a lasting impression of some other thing which was similar to that, which occurred and did not go nicely. And then this is how Sister White was inspired to say no to something. Did you understand? Right, let's hear. Mm -hmm. Miss White mm -hmm. wrote once, Right. My attention is often directed to scenes transpiring upon the earth. Right. At times I'm carried far ahead into the future right. and shown what is to take place. Right. So her attention will see something happening. They say this, she, she saw about what happened in the year of influenza. And in the year of influenza, she wrote that uh, those people in the time of the, that influenza uh, virus, those people who were vegetarians, they survived better. And those who were not vegetarians were all, most of them were struggling with influenza. So now we come to a pandemic. That lasting experience of what you have read, what happened, which is similar to what we are in, comes on your mind and say, let's stick to vegetarian and avoid animal products for now because look at what is happening. This once happened in that scenario there. This is how God works with the prophet. Uh, you understand? Um, let's hear more. Mm -hmm. At times, mm -hmm. I am carried into the far, into far ahead into the future mm -hmm. and shown what is to take place. Right. Then again, mm -hmm. I am shown things as they have occurred in the past. Right. So this is what God dwells. He, he, he makes a lasting impression of a situation okay where the prophet will not that and when that thing happens she is better off or better off prepared for the future when things will happen like it is with the jo joseph joseph interpreted a dream of what was to happen next so in that interpretation it came also as a dream to to pharaoh and what God was giving to Pharaoh was the future. So the similar way, God will make an event of something happening now, which could be a lasting 
an event in the brain, when it happens in the future, then you know how to tackle it. Um, let's go to CCH 15.2 there. Mm -hmm. From, From this, this mm -hmm. it becomes evident that Ellen White saw these events take place. Right. Seemingly as an eyewitness. Mm -hmm. They were reenacted before her in vision. Right. And thus they made a vivid impression on her mind. Right. This is how, how God works with the prophet. Lest when you are looking for a, a prophet who will stop breathing or stop blinking, you won't find that prophet. You will find somebody who is a prophet who God works through. Of course, the very first thing he or she has personal revelation coming from God of how he is going to conduct himself. Do you understand? Or can conduct herself. And how he is going to be confident that God is going to use her or him. And then when he is or she is working, she has first the confidence that God is with that person. You understand? Um, I'm not going to ask, you're not going to ask the, the prophet or anyone to say, tell me, what made you believe you are a prophet? No, that remains the secret between the prophet and God. 15.3, um, CCH. At other times. At other times, mm -hmm. it seemed to her that she was actually taking part in the scene presented to her. Right. And that she was feeling, seeing, hearing and obeying, when of course she was not. Mm -hmm. But the impression was made on her mind right. in an unforgettable manner. Mm -hmm. Her very first vision, presented on pages 33 to 36, was of this nature. Right. Sometimes she will just be thinking of a situation and goes deep into that situation, sees what is happening, and sees how to, you know, how do things come about. And this is the vision that she has gone through it. Um, go to the next paragraph. On, on other occasions, on other occasions. On other occasions, mm -hmm. while in vision, mm -hmm. Miss White seemed to be present at gatherings mm -hmm. or in homes or institutions located at distant so places. So all these things are happening in her mind, right? So she seems to be in a gathering, right? Uh -huh. So vivid was this sense of being present at mm -hmm. such gatherings mm -hmm. that she could report in detail the actions and the words spoken by various persons. Right. Once, while in vision, Miss White had the sensation that she was being taken on a tour mm -hmm. of one of our medical institutions, mm -hmm. visiting the rooms as it were, mm -hmm. seeing everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. Of this experience she wrote. Right. What did she, what did she see? She's seeing an event, right? Mm -hmm. The frivolous talk, right? the foolish jesting, mm -hmm. the meaningless laugh mm -hmm. fell painfully on the ear. Right. I was astonished as how I saw as I saw the jealousy indulged and listened to the words of envy, mm -hmm. the reckless talk, right. which made the angels of God ashamed. So she's also watching the angels of God listening to those jestings. The frivolous talk. talk Frivolous talk. Meaningless laugh. Meaningless laughter. People doing all sorts of things who were believing and the angels being so annoyed with what was happening. This is what she, she was running into her mind. Right? Then. Then, mm -hmm. other more pleasant conditions at the same institutions were revealed. Mm -hmm. She was conducted to the, same ro to the rooms mm -hmm. from which came the voices of prayer. Right? How welcome was the sound? Mm -hmm. A message of instruction was written based on the seeming visit to the institution and on the words of... So, when she would be coming to visit that institution, God had already prepared Sister White in a vision of the situation in that institution. So when she comes, she meets exactly what God had already shown her. This is how God used to inspire Sister White, right? Uh -huh. Often light. Often mm -hmm. light was given to Miss White in mm -hmm. vivid symbolic representations. Right. One such representation is clearly described in the following sentences. Right. Taken from a person personal message mm -hmm. sent to a leading worker mm -hmm. who was seen to be in peril. Right. So light was given to Mrs. in a vivid symbolic representation. Yeah? 
So we are seeing now this vivid symbolic representation. Let's hear that. At Sorry. Lost at message. another time. At another time. Mm -hmm. You were represented to me as a general. So she's now talking <coughs> to the person who she had already seen in a symbolic uh, representation. Now she's telling, she's revealing to that person how she saw that person. Let's hear it at another time. At another time, mm -hmm. you were represented to me as a general. Right. Mounted on a horse. So that person was like a general mounted on a horse. And carrying a banner. And that person was carrying a banner. One came mm -hmm. and took out of your hand the banner being bearing the words, mm -hmm. the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it was trampled in the dust. Mm -hmm. I saw you surrounded by men who were linking you up with the world. Right. So what is this person being linked with? This was in a vision with those who are hooked in the world. So this is a person who maybe was working as a, a responsible person in the church. And what is it that she, she saw? She saw somebody who is hooked to the world, who is working like a general, who, who, who is not what they are seeing in the church. This is what she saw. Um, there were times. There were times also when different contrasting views mm -hmm. were presented to Miss White. Right. One illustrating what, could, what would take place if certain plans or policies were followed. Right. And in other view, mm -hmm. the outworking of other plans or policies. Mm -hmm. An excellent illustration of this may be found in connection with the location of the health food secretary, factory, sorry, at Loma Lind, mm -hmm. in the western part of the United States. Mm -hmm. The manager and his associates were planning to erect a large building very near to the main sanitarium building. Mm -hmm. While plans were developing, Miss White at her home, hundreds of miles away, Right. Was one night given two visions. Mm -hmm. Of the first vision, she says. Right. I was shown. I was shown. So she was not at that place. She was hundred miles away, but she was being shown what was happening at such a place. Right. Uh -huh. I was shown a large building. Right. Where many foods were made. Mm -hmm. There were also some smaller buildings near the bakery. Mm -hmm. As I stood by, mm -hmm. I heard loud voices in dispute. Over the work that was being done. Right. There was a lack of harmony among the workers mm -hmm. and confusion had come in. Right. So this is how she would manage the work in distant lands. So how would you manage that work and you claim you have a lot of people in different countries, a lot of people. How would you manage without a prophet who God shows in a vision what is happening somewhere? This is what Sister White was being told about the work happening elsewhere where she is, not there. Then when you come, there's no prophet. Who is doing that for you? Um, go to the next one. She then saw. She then saw mm -hmm. the distressed manager mm -hmm. in his attempts to reason with the workers to bring about harmony. Right. She saw patients who overheard these disputes mm -hmm. and who were expressing words of regret that a food factory should be established on these beautiful grounds, so mm -hmm. near on the sanitarium. Mm -hmm. Then one appeared on the scene and said, all so, this... So, so in brief, this is how she managed to work. Whatever was a threatening area where the, the institutes were, she would be shown by God. But then if we have no prophet, who is doing that these days? Who is doing that? Who is going into the vision of that? Um, let's go to 17.1 there, where she says, although I am as dependent. Although I am mm -hmm. as dependent upon the aid of the Spirit of God in writing my views, mm -hmm. as I am in receiving them, right? yet the words I employ in describing what I have seen are my own. Right. Unless... So she claims, when she brings this thing that God is showing them, sh showing her, she presents them in her own words. So it means God will show her a vision. But when she relates to the vision, she uses her own words. This is what she said. Uh -huh. Unless they are spoken to me mm -hmm. by an angel, which, I'm always in, which I always enclose in marks of quotation. Right. Unless the angel will say the sentences to her, then she will put them as a, she will quote them. But the rest of what she was seeing in vision, she would say 
with their own words. Right? Uh -huh. Like several Bible writers. Like several Bible writers, mm -hmm. Miss White at times elected, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, to use the language of other authors. So, which... like several Bible, like Jeremiah, we saw. She had, he had a, a, a writer. He's not the one who wrote the book of Jeremiah. And the, several writers there, they were not writing. They had other secretaries who were writing. Sister White also, we use other authors. So, like several Bible writers, Mrs. White at times elected under the direction of the Holy Spirit to use the language of other authors where she especially appreciated their wording and their expressions. Right. So she also used other authors. So that under the direction of the Spirit, we say, take that book and that book and that book, compile. She will do that. There's nothing sinister about it. We have all these five writers there. William Miller, William Miller, Sister White, Pity Water, the branch. If, she, if God chooses a prophet, we'll take from any of these books and give you. But if you blink yourself and put all these analysis and say, I'm not, no, I'm not, in the, God cannot use people who are blinkered. People who think wide and use all other authors as long as to the law and to the testimony. That's, that's your guide to, to everything. God did not even sanction blinkering people. Um, David and Solomon. Da David and Solomon uh -huh. wrote the Psalms and Proverbs. David and Solomon wrote this, the Psalms and the Proverbs. Let's hear. Uh -huh. Not by visions. Not by visions. Dreams or angels. Or dreams or angels. Not by all that. But by the silent voice of the Spirit of they, God. What used them was the silent voice of the Spirit of, of God. Of the Spirit of God. Imprinted, imprinted in the minds in the of mind. his servants. So who proved? We are reading their Psalms, the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, but there were no visions. There were no. Sister White clearly says that. There were no visions. There were no uh, dreams, no angels, but by the silent voice of the Spirit of God imprinted in the minds of his servants. This is from 1 uh, Ezra 223 2, to 235, where we are reading. Right. The silent voice is the one that inspired them to write. But you and I, we believe there was no dream, there was no angel, there was no vision. But they, someone will say, I, I, I didn't have a, a vision. I didn't have a, 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 a dream. No. I didn't see an angel. No. So how are you writing? How are you telling people? I have a silent voice inside me. How would you prove that? But this is how the Psalms were written and the Proverbs were written. With a silent voice inside the mind. Right? Let's hear. Mm -hmm. God spoke to Esther and Ruth. Right? By experiences. Through the divine providence. Right. John received the revelation by visions. Right. God speaks to us also by types and antitypes. Right. We have types. So that's why we say, when there is no type, there is no truth. If we say there is a second exodus, yes, there is, there is a second because there is a type of a first exodus. So, by types and antitypes, this is how God also speaks to us. When he say there is a slaughter of Ezekiel 9, there is a type. There was a slaughter in Egypt of the firstborns. And here we are being, we are being shown another. And when you say this, this slaughter occurs at the Passover feast, where is the type to it? The type is there. When the slaughter of the firstborns occurred, when they were passing over where there was blood on the door. So God also speaks to us through the types. Right? And, and what? God speaks to us also by the types and antitypes. Right. Through the ceremonial law. Right. By the patriarchs and by the experiences of ancient Israel. Right. <clears throat> so we see God also speaks to us through all that is all designed so that we also um, understand how God... It's a long subject. We cannot finish it in one day. We will choose another day to finish that subject. But it's to help us. When we think we are left alone, heaven is on its own, and we are on our own. We still have a prophet of the hour, and that's why also he has promised that he will send Elijah the prophet 
with the statutes and judgment, we cannot be left alone in this darkest period of the earth history. When it was so white, when it was so clean in the Garden of Eden, there was a communication with the heaven. When Abraham was still a friend of God, seeing even God visiting him, there was a prophet. But now when it is so dark, so evil, then you proclaim that there is no prophet. We are not left alone. God will lead the one for four thousand with a prophet. Like the Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 says, The dragon was wroth with the woman who has, and his seed, and her seed, who kept the commandments and have a prophet or they have a testimony, a, the spirit of prophets, the testimony leading the one for four thousand. God will not leave, leave us alone. Don't listen to the devil when he tells you, when he tells you that there is no more prophet. We are now left to his exposure or to vulnerable to his devices. We are still under led by God and God alone through his prophets. May God bless us as we ponder and continue learning more about the present truth.